In their respite, the heroes discuss their reservations with working with the newfound drow allies while asking questions about their nearby settlement of Hildaris. Invited to be escorted and introduced at their leisure, the heroes decided to explore a little further before accepting. And as they did, they bore witness to their previous Medusa foe being led into captivity by the drow. Finding some treasure and another secret door to the godlike's footprint opened by the crimson lens they carried. And returning once more to the drow refuge, the heroes took watches. And during lumps, they wandered off for some alone time, conjuring their magical poltergeist in the form of Tulak once again. When the smell of brimstone introduced Bark and Buck in the periphery, the Aranese Hellford Smith claimed Lump was nearly in breach of their contract and spelled imminent doom for their soul. Oh, geez. Thanks for joining us. It's so good to have you. Oh, boy. Oh, I've got something right away. Oh, I just wanted to have a quick chat about what we call character voices and the ones you love to do and the severe lack of variety from some of us. Oh, please tell me. What's your favorite? What have you worked on the hardest? Why do I sound like this? Please stop me. <laughs> Somebody no. interrupt. Oh my gonna, god. I'll go for that. Okay, it started Snaggle Post. Let's see how far away we can get it if he keeps talking. <laughs> Maybe we can go from Snaggle Post to Scooby Doo, just like the real Bon Messick. <laughs> uh. uh what was the question? No, but for real though. I- I love character voices. We all know this. Uh, I know James actually works quite hard in some of his, uh, and I know not everyone uh, is comfortable with a large variety. And I w- I've always loved the 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 uh, conversation of um, you don't have to put an accent on. You don't have to be British or Scottish. You just have to have you know change in inflection a or yeah. a way of t- yeah have a way of talking. And uh, even it's not, changing it's your not posture easy. can do it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I just want to know what what efforts each of us has gone through, perhaps, that, that are notable for you uh, to put some effort into a, a character voice. Now, of course, we all give Scott some shit about his lack thereof, but there is a notice, a noticeable change in, you know, the cadence when when Scott puts a, yep. a character voice in. So we can't deny, we can't say he doesn't do one. It's, it's straight up not true. Uh, but, you know, what is it, Scott, that takes, uh, that, what is it you do to get yourself into even the most subtle of modes to change how you're speaking? What's a famous D&D GM on, um, Mercer. on YouTube? Not Mercer. Uh, Brendan Lee Mulligan. No, nope. uh, I don't know. This. It's, uh, I know someone that it's, Freeman. Uh, it's Koval. Yeah, Koval. Matt Koval. Early on, when I was first started playing again, I think it was him did a video on character voice and that it doesn't just have to be accents. And then I watched yep. further videos that talked about how just doing accents can be kind of racist too. Because you're like, oh, every single this person is this accent. And so basically, I'm just covering my ass for the fact that I can't do accents. 
by just saying that you guys are racist and yeah, you're uh, being woke as you do <laughs> yeah, a southern I'm being accent <laughs> now yeah, a, a, a hillbilly hunter type you're doing i'm a doing a accent. hillbilly okay. hunter type but i sure, feel like sure. that's Come okay because they had it coming <laughs> And if you disagree, check out Get the Discord. Find me on the public Discord. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was a point way, a way back. I don't know if it was a blooper or in the episode, but it was like uh, I think James says, oh, I think that's a bit racist. And it was because I think I was doing an Italian accent. And then Scott went, nah, it's white on white. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. I remember you saying that. <laughs> but I mean, that is largely where people are with it. You can go, uh, you know, Western European accents and that's about it. And then, I mean, that yeah. gets a little bit constraining. And my biggest thing with like character voices, like um, just to get us back on topic is uh, I think I have maybe three good ones uh, i have the yarlin which is what i used for glash mm-hmm. and then uh lump is mostly just talking with my mouth closer so it's a smaller mouth aperture instead of my normal talking like this with my mouth fully open mm-hmm. and then uh talford is just vocal fry closer to like the esophagus and then mm-hmm. um obviously i can do very low voices and uh some I can do a couple different Southern accents, uh, but just to like give Freeman just a little bit of shit. How the fuck is everybody in Otari have a completely different accent? Like, <laughs> how does this town not have a shared it's a accent? Melting pot. Sorry, I, I, uh, there sorry, actually I, is canonical reasons for that. Believe it. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, because one, Otari is is on a trade route. It's established by a bunch of. Uh, yeah, sounds like a compliment to me. Thank it you. is. <laughs> but no, James is right. It is. It is an established, tra- like very active trade route, and it is not necessarily it's the only reason for it homegrown people. It is known for residents transplants their culture. Yeah, are no I, natives to Absalom. That being said, that is that is my inferred culture to Otari. There is some. There's some. Uh, 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 writing for that for like the in the player's guide and the ap and stuff like that but like for me i knew that i wanted to have distinct voices for many of them if i could yeah. um because i, I like to do it i job. really enjoy it so that to me is like okay i'm making i have a very good excuse to make it a variety because it is a, a, a hub of trade yeah i am absolutely bummed that we have not gotten a french npc though since the episode 100 <laughs> that librarian <laughs> Even when I go back and listen to that, I think I, oh, I can barely understand myself. So it's probably for the best I don't have a, a, a mainstay. But but I I, I love could understand it. It's it fun. It was, it was <laughs> it's so, so good. Fun. <laughs> ten out of ten would just role play way more hard. Just... Uh, but yeah, like I said, just like uh, mostly just try to get because I suck at accents, so I just mostly try to get my mouth to be the shape and size of the character that I think it would be, and then. Uh, like for feminine voices, I don't like going up here in falsetto because it doesn't sound like a woman's right, voice. Yeah, like you just talk with a smaller mouth. Sa- and- uh, same for me. Like if I do Aloria Galantine, Aloria is basically the same as uh, it's not much different than than say Gerald or Longsaddle. It's just like I'm not putting a, a gravelly on it. I'm just I'm just talking a bit more like that, and I, I go a little more uh, uh, gentrified kind of approach, you know. Uh, but I, I'm not trying to go. Oh yes, I'm a I'm a lady. I promise you, I'm a lady. <laughs> it's just that it's, it's not believable at that point because you know it's me doing it. <laughs> you know, it's not it's not it's not a voice actor doing it. It's even if it's a voice actor, like just ah, never mind. Go on. Yeah, uh, no, you 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 get hire a woman to do it, right? <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Part, and I would argue yeah, that you are a voice actor. <laughs> Yeah, we, uh, fair, fair we, enough. We kind of yeah. get paid for this. Like we, we we may not have a take home salary, but we are making an income from this. That makes us professionals. That yeah, makes yeah, you a professional enough, yeah. voice actor. Mm-hmm. And if you look at Bob's Burgers too, like the amount of male voices that do uh, female voices, <laughs> it's hilarious. But they're like very particular. Not unlike yeah. Snagglepuss, <laughs> you know. It's yeah. like it's such a particular style, and it's it's amazing. Yeah, and they aren't in falsetto. They're not. Yeah, and they're not yeah. in falsetto. That's that's yeah, that's, that's, that's the that's big the, thing. Yeah, you never want to hit falsetto. You just want to go an octave no higher. Yeah. Yep. Um, James, I know you put a lot of work in some of your voices. 
tell me. I could talk about this for hours, so I need okay. more direction here. Like, we what, have, what uh, specifically do you want to know? Like two minutes. <laughs> yeah, well, I know. I mean. I, I, okay, I'll tell you what. I, I know that you put a lot of effort into a Tim Roth uh, 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 voice. Tell us about that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So one of our homebrew campaigns, I did a um, a, a, a Tengu summoner um, who's super lazy. And I Back really room. like Tim Roth. <laughs> I really like the the cadence of his voice and the way he presents things and the way he's somehow got this like southern English accent, but it's also got just a touch of upspeak to it at the end of every mm-hmm. sentence. So I watched almost every movie he's ever been in and watched like three seasons of Lie to Me to prepare. <laughs> like to the point where the last episodes of Lie to Me, I was talking along with him just to kind of make sure I had the cadence right but it's it's much harder to slip into now and i pinch the bridge of my nose and extend the sides of my lips so i get a little bit more of a a wide flow to it but that that's kind of where all my character voices come from is is they're just really bad impressions like even gildo is more of a sing song tone but it was very heavily inspired by kelly mcdonald specifically her mm. role in train spotting and Raphael and, and Arthur, they're just Jordi Mola, but with a different cadence, a little bit more of a staccato tone to his voice, as opposed to Jordi Mola's like really um, uh, effervescent voice. But mm. when Which it comes actually, to like creating an about, accent from We had to talk whole, about after, yeah. you remember, like uh, it, you had too much breath uh, for the mic and the, the, yeah. the clarity. Yeah. So we, you had to scale it back. We had that conversation. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why I went with more staccato instead of breathy, mm-hmm. specifically yeah. for Ruff. Ruff is, uh, I'm trying to get him an octave higher than Arthur. Um, or he was an octave higher, and now that he's old man, Ruff, he's he's kind of come down. Down the same, yeah. Um, but when it comes to different species specifically, I look at the shape of their face and the way I imagine their jaw muscles to move. So when I was the Patra and Starfinder, I would just add a little bit of a roll to the tongue, you know, bringing out the prowl every now and again. And just... A little bit, wow. trying to smooth my voice out and drop it an octave. Um, but Corvin was the first accent that I came up with whole cloth. And that was, you know, just like a Welsh interpretation. But I would keep my tongue in the bottom right half of my mouth. I was really experimenting with embouchure to try and get that almost Vinnie Jones, but a little bit of a slur going on. But And I just <laughs> would never move my tongue when I was talking yeah. as him. So I, I, I always try and do something new and interesting because it's not fun to just for me to just do the same thing. Mm. Um, but I try yes, my best God. not to zero in on a country or a style of accent. I would much rather do an impression because that was Mel Blanc's thing. Mel Blanc's, yeah. All Mel Blanc's character voices came from bad impressions of other people. Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, my accents are always. I don't. I never claim to do a good accent. They're not one hundred percent pastiches. Like I'm not. I cannot do an impression. Uh, Stanglepuss is probably my best one, <laughs> and even that's not bang on. Uh, I disagree. Pa- it's Decker King. Yeah, I, like people have, <laughs> yeah, have Deck- 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 reached Deck- out yeah, to me I have one, specifically have one is- <laughs> about your Decker King. <laughs> If I have one, it's Decker Kid. You're, I'll, really give, uh, I'll give you and myself that. <laughs> I will. Yeah. <laughs> good old Morla Bint. Um, there'll probably be a, a Decker Kane voice in every campaign we do, just so you know. Because <laughs> I love doing oh, yeah. it. Um, it could just be Morla Bint. You just hit 15th yeah. level. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, more, Kevin more, more died Lebint. and he decided to explore the world. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dunk, don't put that hate on Kevin. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I'm I haven't done a ton yet, but I'm just a, a, a silly goose, and I'm playing around with stuff like you know, physic was just uh, just trying to do something cute with a little goblin voice. I don't know. I hit a curb at the frog and had a lot of fun with that. Yeah, but um, but physics voice is like you know difficult. Like I can't do physics voice. It hurts. Yeah, so I'm not gonna have me. like a pretty good degree of flexibility with my voice, so that's what I'm gonna <laughs> play it around with. Yeah. But if I try, what if I, I found with that, physics, it's really difficult. I mean, right. hey, can't you make your mouth? But it, it mm. gave me two minutes, and it hurts. Like it really yeah. hurts. It's and that, like, I found uh, that it did kind of, you know, it was hard to uh, be able to speak at length with the physic mm-hmm. voice, but I don't think that that was a thing I couldn't train. Uh, mm-hmm. So, like, and and the same with the crook of voice. Like, it was just a little bit more gravelly than myself. But even that, like, being able to control the breath and not then 
breathe mm. very heavily into the microphone and make it sound more kind of like flowy is pretty hard to do. So I've been trying to like, I've been trying to make all of them pretty non-specific in terms of like regionalisms anyways, for that reason, and just see what I can do with a vocal register because it's, it's been a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I honestly haven't put too much. I think I then as I go, like uh, I'll want my next voice to be more based around like a center or a place instead of just kind of like what I can do around a register, which is how I found these voices so far. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've, j I've just been going for versatility so far. And now now I think I've, I'm going to be able to narrow down on on more like full character voices uh yeah. yeah and you did do another fun character voice previous to this that the listeners wouldn't know but you did god what was his name the tengu Chagir. oh jack yeah, yeah, I don't, a great one. yeah jack. i don't even remember that oh yeah kind of like a crow i can't even remember what it, it was wasn't doing. it actually it was very in the same vein as physic uh but like mm. it just but it just had a more bird like more squawky it, <laughs> as it were yeah, yeah. you yeah. you had a you finished yeah. your sentences very sharply yeah. And, yeah, and that's kind of what got you there. <laughs> honestly, honestly, that one was like trying to just talk like a bird and just like squawk into the <laughs> yeah. microphone as which, much as possible. Which I'll be honest, yeah. the rare time Magiloy ever spoke in anything we produced, same thing. I I just followed your. I actually followed your lead on that. I remember. I was like, I'm just gonna do. I'm just gonna do like a weird squawky voice. <laughs> cool. yeah, well, shit. Yeah. I hope we have that recorded somewhere because I can't remember what I did with it at all. I, uh, we do. It's yeah, I mean. Yeah. Uh, maybe we have Shakira. I know we have we do. in we the do. episode 100 lead up uh, that the, the recaps we have uh, the vin the original vignettes we did. I know that uh, uh, Magali speaks in that. I can't Cry out. I it can't may not be released, but we definitely have. Cry out, patrons, for limited bonus content. Limited bonus content. <laughs> limited. <laughs> so limited. But yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, for our next episode, we will hold off. Uh, we will wait for uh, Scott's in-depth uh, explanation for the differences between Tulak and Aelin Weinmar. Uh, but for now... Uh, <laughs> that's a fucking dissertation, bud. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Hey, we it's definitely, so, that's it's an so in-depth. There is uh, no difference. Those are my half-elves. They sound the same. Half -elf, it's half-elf male one voice. Yeah. When you're selecting in Skyrim what the voice is, it was half-elf male one. <laughs> respect with Commitment. with reference with reference to that we will get into a voice that i had uh it's a basically exactly the same as one of the otari npcs uh it is for the the aranese creature known as bark and buck it's pretty much the same voice as merriman <laughs> which oh, is yeah. just a little bit deep and a calm sound and it is this, hella authoritative. This devil emphasis on the hell. <laughs> Hero this point. devil appears <laughs> next to Lump in a moment of seeking some sort of closure or emotional. Someone and finish my sentence for me, please. <laughs> Catharsis. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to say recourse, and I knew it wasn't right. <laughs> Emotional I didn't know where you were going. Emotional recourse. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Emotional catharsis. Uh, and, uh, I mean, a not, not quite old demon or whatever pops up. Demons don't have age. Um, more, more of a metaphorical demon. Devil. Yeah. Uh, pops up to you and says to you, Lump. You're nearly in breach of your contract. Lump starts to sweat going through their head who they have harmed and not seen killed before looking pleadingly at Bark and Buck. Taking a knee. Hmm. You know we deal in souls, right, Lump? Uh, yes. And your task is to see some souls through, yes? 
Yes. And Lump just swallows really hard. And the snake haired one. When you threw her to the ground, bludgeoned her body upon the cave floor, did you not think to see it through? Lump sighs, just stops to think for a moment. Well? I did think to see it through, but she is not of sound mind and she is now currently a prisoner he gives you a somewhere between confused and amused look and oh, your yeah, lump is- <laughs> mortal petty concerns are mine lump uh- uh, not that I am aware of. No, I, I do not believe them to be. And Lump will look down at their hand as it shifts into a rapier. The symbol of a Razni of taking care of yourself and just contemplate for a moment what to do next so if I do not see this through you take my soul now or later you simply come closer to my possession. I see. Can you live with that? Because you will die with it. And Lump kind of rubs their chin underneath their eye like somebody would rub like their eyebrow above their head when they have a headache. How long do I have? There is no length. Your years mean nothing in the hells. You finish what you started, or you become closer to death. That is the payment you signed off. Lump nods. Then I suppose I will be one more step closer to you for the time being. So be it, Lump. But if you are in breach again, Your step will cause you to fall. And in a burst of brimstone, Barkabuck disappears. And Lump is doomed one. Hooray. (laughs) That sounds good. It's good. It's real good. Which means it's that dying, very interesting. Which means that dying three lump will die. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, just speaking of this, mm-hmm. how much do the players know about your contract? Because I now I'm trying to remember, but I don't remember. I don't anything. think anyone knows anything. Nothing. Yeah, nope. It's been a secret. It's been a very <laughs> strong secret. Yeah. Very intriguing. Up to and including that in in Lump's p- possession, I've renamed the contract to rolled parchment in order to like make everyone like just think it means nothing. <laughs> if they look at Lump's like inventory, <laughs> like yep. it is a thing. Yep. Hmm. Hmm. And Lump has uh, not used the benefit of this contract. Hmm. Hmm. No. Though though I did add it to your uh your actions list 
cam for you uh, as a yeah. reminder if you ever want it. Just another monthly subscription sitting there doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. So that's where <laughs> Columbia House came from. <laughs> yeah. They got the ball rolling anyway. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to think, like, from an anathema level, I think that I could go just put down the Medusa. Like, I don't think it'd be against any of my edicts. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. I, I don't. I, as as far as I know, I don't think it is either. Uh, it is really up to you. I really want to put that ball in your court. Uh, we will. I'll go ahead and reveal some of this to everyone so that the listeners have a better idea too. I don't want to keep it too um, shrouded. Um, yeah. But it, effectively, um, if Lump damages a creature, they are obligated to see it to death. Oh, ooh, yeah, and Lump critically succeeded in tripping uh the medusa i've been very careful <laughs> which caused it to take bludgeoning damage it's the only creature so far that hasn't died after lump has damaged it fucking all gas no brakes on a lump <laughs> yeah <laughs> why do you think i mostly yeah. trip people instead of hitting them <laughs> i thought you just wanted to set them up for to get stabbed with the dancing spear i played a little fast and loose with the timing on it just because it was a great ending and start to an episode it should yeah. be 24 hours after. It's been less than, but fuck that. Yeah. This is Whatever. Great. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. I mean, if you just want to cheat, you can cheat. You're the GM. You can just make up whatever you want to. We also don't know how long that combat ran. Like, that mm. could have been uh, yeah. hours. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. It just yeah. blacked out for a while. put no proper <laughs> fantasy, it could have been a long time, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, the drow might not love the Medusa getting popped in the night. I don't know if they get a choice. To me, it sounds like a an internalization of like, do I make the conversation? Do I go do it? Do I reap the consequences? Like, what do you do, Lump? What's going through Lump's mind with this pressure? I think there are definitely times in Lump's life that they would have just done this, no questions asked. Would have just, you know, if there's nobody, especially if there's nobody in front of the drow door, just slip in, coup de gras, get out. But I think that they're trying to be better in kind of a nod to Tulak. Like Tulak was definitely a little bit on the bloody side, but definitely probably wouldn't kill the Medusa. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Scott always played fast and loose with the chaotic good levels of Tulak. Mm -hmm. Tulak was all about killing incapacitated creatures. <laughs> That's true. That, that like, is a persistent. Uh, he made a sport <laughs> like a of hobby. it. That was their yeah. MO when Gilda was in the party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just like Gilda would get three feet out the door and he would be in there slitting throats. <laughs> if Tulak walked in on a couple having a bit of a uh, a bit of a bondage fun time. He would just instinct instinctually stab <laughs> the one tied up. Just like just couldn't help himself. <laughs> mm. Get him. <laughs> We're joining in. And everyone lived for quite some time. Yeah. <laughs> Just long enough. I think Lump is going to go see if any of the drow are awake. Because their first instinct was to shift their hand into a Razni. And her anath or sorry, her edicts are do whatever it takes to survive. Mm -hmm. And so I think that Lump is just going to be like, that sucks, but uh, pop. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, just like if any of the drow are awake or guarding the room is just going to in Elven. Um, I'm, I'm sorry for bar bothering you, but I have a bit of an issue and... I'm hoping that we can come to some sort of agreement, uh, but I need to put down that Medusa. I see. Uh, we brought uh, this creature into our prison because we considered it a threat. But, uh, there seems to be a docile nature to it. Uh, we considered setting it free. We don't know much about this sort of creature. This snake-haired thing, it seems to have shut down after the foray in the cavern. 
what is your need exactly? Why has she slighted you in some way? Yes. She and the sloth were working together and tried to kill me and my friends. Ooh. Roll me a deception. Uh, 15. She doesn't seem like the sort of creature to be working with someone. Something's happened to her, we've found. Something with her mind. Were you sure she was not being controlled in some capacity? She is not being controlled. She is under the effects of a Nevermind spell. Well, that is quite a different thing altogether, isn't it? How so? Well, she might not have been acting of her own accord, but it was also not of the will of another. She was acting on instinct. She deserves death no less than the spider out there. Though we benefited from it and it was our goal, does she deserve it? Did it deserve it? Let me ask you a question to your question. If something acts outside of their mental faculties, like uh, let's say one of your comrades drank too much mushroom wine and accidentally killed somebody, would they not be held responsible or not be punished for it? It's a good point. The only answer I can give you is that is generally the decision of my superiors it is not mine. I have perhaps not gained the wisdom to make such a decision yet, or at least not proved I have it. I find it humbling to remind myself of that. Perhaps you should too. And perhaps you should remember that you found her hostile and now you consider letting her go. So either way, she will not be your problem. This is not true. You, you have assumed and inferred. We found her quite docile. Yes. We saw her at a distance, but did not approach because of the danger between. It was you who triggered the hostilities that brought us into the fray. And Lump will just shake their head if this is your final answer. I'm not sure what the question is. Will you let me kill her? Will you let me execute this prisoner? Then my answer is no. Very well. However, should you wish to speak to our overseer, our superior, which I think you do, the whole of you, you may speak with her, and she can make a decision for your daughters. For now, this creature is a prisoner under our protection, as it were. But I will follow Quora or Shandiel's command. Does that satisfy you? Lump is already mentally checked out. And just <laughs> like, no, it was just like already calculating. Just like, like everyone else are, on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> is no, it's more of a like, there's two of them. Oh, you could take them. You definitely could take them. Yeah. Yeah. That's where it is mm-hmm. coming down to right now. But then Lump will just kind of sigh and just walk off and not respond. If we had some kind of a Trojan horse. Or with like a Trojan Perseus in it. Mm. And yeah, the the drow you're talking to is you know, kind of confused by your your non response. But with a shrug of a shoulder, sits down, continues their watch. And Lump will go wake up Nick. Because I think it's funny for the Kobo they can't talk to anybody to be awake. <laughs> oh, oh, Lump. What's what's happening? Um, 
the drow said you're ugly. And we'll just like mm. roll over and go to sleep. Well, <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> They've got a point, and I have been working on myself, but I suppose there's still more work to be done. <laughs> Don't listen to them. They're haters. <laughs> can we just can we just uh, gonna, uh, can we just get a look at Nick? Who just share that picture with you? Oh, uh, I should take look, a good long look in the mirror. Just look now. at how ridiculously handsome this drow is. <laughs> <laughs> If I were to take the mirror that I'm taking a good <laughs> long look in into the room with that Medusa. <laughs> they may be handsome, but Nick is sultry with them low-rise jeans. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, but yeah, that is uh, all for Lump, unless other people have stuff. So you all have a good night's sleep. Reset your, reset your shit. Uh, level and up. in the morning, <laughs> and in the year, and you definitely don't level up. You just level you two? just oh, got wow. to level up. Got Come to. on, man! <laughs> no, but I want another one. I'm a greedy little bitch. The uh, the the drow here. Uh, you you actually what might notice in the morning uh, that there is uh, another one of these uh, drow wardens kind of kicking around. Uh, perhaps even two. Let's make it two more. Uh, nope. And maybe there's more elsewhere, but uh, yeah, basically they've been effectively reinforced and the, um, to a degree in the, um, uh, yeah, the truce still stands the, and the offer still stands. Do you want to go, do you want to go to Eldaris? Do you want to meet their leader? Um, or, you I know, think we want a hundred percent this level first. I, 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 yeah, I do want to clear. They're setting themselves back up and they're, they're ready and waiting if you want to yeah. move forward. I want to clear the third room and the dock that we haven't been to, and then I'm down to go, provided we're not tapped. All right, so you are heading over to Yon, um, third. What's behind door number three, Freeman? In yeah, door number three in the area which you fought the frog hemoth, you never quite explored. Lump is at the door. Lump Nick is next knock, knock. nearby. Ruff is right there. Harold in the back like a chicken. Oh no, Harold moved up. Okay, good. Um, and you crack open the door. I said Lump will knock. Lump will knock. Knock knock. Knock. And then knock. open up the door. It's real with a nonstop pop up, a stainless steel. I don't know what you just said, but you <laughs> knock, knock, and you hear a rustling inside. But it's not like it's not like your typical rustling. It's not. Like, not it's not a typical. It's a typical door rustle. rustle. It's not your granddaddy's uh, rustling. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sound of an old man slowly putting pants back. It on. is. It is a weird uh, sort of like long. Scraping like. What does my motion sense feel like? But it's not metallic. Uh-huh. It's uh oh, your motion sense. Yeah. Herald Scouts detect like? something. Detect something very large behind this door. How la- is it? Fi- it's gonna be filling the whole room. Uh, oh boy! Yes, it appears. Or literally, it's not a room. It literally it's is. Entryway. It literally is filling the whole room. That, How did you get in there? So, uh... Carefully. Yeah. Uh, so... They built around it like a piano. Yeah, I guess we don't know, but I just... Lump is going to motion for uh, Nick to stand behind them to the north uh, just to get into a line, and then that will leave rough a line of sight for whatever is attacking. And then Harold... Uh, uh, just, just stand there and look pretty. Yes, you're doing it. Good job. Ooh. <laughs> Strike a pose. Uh, yeah. He's good. He, he's so good. It's, it's the beard and the mustache. No, oh, my oh, goodness. Uh, but yeah, we'll freehand open the door. Okay, you freehand open the door, and you are met with an extraordinary stench that Ooh. just wafts through <laughs> and starts to make you your stomach turn and you retch a little bit and you are 
I, I, the first thing that pops out is the face and the claw and the jaws of this creature. Ooh, roll for initiative. Kind of 1990s Godzilla. Yeah. <laughs> Nick just goes, Papa? Papa? <laughs> Daddy! <laughs> Um, it's possible that someone here might remember that James had a really an, uh, annoyed uh, rant about this creature. A while oh, back. yeah. Yep. Does anyone remember what it was about? Uh, it was one of the creatures that, like, should have a swim speed but doesn't because of the fin. I can't remember the name of the creature, but we found it in the prison uh, in one of the stasis mm. things. That is correct. I would give you a hair point if you didn't work full up already again. Yeah, that's fine. Give it to me. <laughs> yeah, give it to Dunk. <laughs> nope. Uh, also, I don't think you ever discovered why it doesn't, because uh, no, I'm quite sure you never really realized why. So uh, you didn't actually succeed on your checks. James just got mad about its swimming fin <laughs> and it not being amphibious. Now I'm least. mad again. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm working on it. I think it was okay, around yeah, episode 86. Yeah, it was yeah. 87, it, it, 88. It was, in the, it was in level 7. Um, let's roll initiative. Organized. Lump, what'd you get? Oh, I rolled a natural 3 for a 20. Okay. Uh, who else? Nick? I rolled a natural 18 for a 29. Okay. Harold? Mm, I rolled a 18 <laughs> for a 34. Okay, and at least it's rough. Natural one for a 15. Not feeling it, buddy. Okie dokie. Okay, uh, but we just throw it right now. At the start of your turn, we have an aura. You have to roll a fortitude save. Don't let me forget, please. Uh, (laughs) But what's going to happen first is uh, this creature is going to quickly snap its jaws out the door at Lump for a 40 to hit. That's a crit. Oof. That's a crit. Okay. So we're coming in with a 42 uh, piercing damage. Okay. And a 2d6 persistent acid as the acid from its jaws and its saliva just like just drips all over you. Um, and then it is going to uh, go ahead and swing at you with a, What are you rolling over there? I'm, I'm <laughs> rolling the 42 minus my shield's 14 hardness as I shield block 14 of it. Okay. Okay, thank you, thank you, cool. Yep. So lump shield blocks, very good call. Still a crit, which is brutal. Um, it is. A quick claw comes out from behind it with a twenty-five to hit. Miss. And a follow-up with a two as it's trying to like, or twenty-two, sorry, with while well, it's trying to like breach through this very narrow door at you. Uh, it is just swinging, but it, it's a large creature in a in a ten by ten foot room, basically. Uh, it is. In exactly the space it can occupy, and it is struggling to come at you. That brings us to Harold. Roll me a fortitude save, please, because stinky, stinky. That is a thirty-three. Oh, okay. That's uh, that is a very, very large success. Uh, we just see. Uh, 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 well, this aura affected creatures take a mouse. Okay, so that is a success. It doesn't say that you're being immune, though, so you might have to roll this again. Uh, what do you got? What do you got going on? Okay, I'm going to exploit vulnerability. It's a 31 for a success, mm-hmm. um, and it doesn't seem to have any weaknesses. So I'm going to take the personal antithesis. Uh, okay. Which gives you what advantage? Oh, you're just adding. You basically add damage, like uh, custom damage, right? Yeah. Okay. Still, still and then to, still trying to remember how the thaumaturgy works. <laughs> I will take a five foot step back, and then I'd like to do a. Or sorry, do I know how far the um, aura is? Uh, it just wafts out of the out of the, out of the uh, door. Yeah, it's hard to say. Okay, so bo- smells. sorry, I would right. like to instead of taking that step back, I would like to um, do a recall knowledge. Okay, 
and I'm going uh, to. Wait, does, doesn't 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 your exploit vulnerability uh, get, do the same thing at the same time? With the... It's only weaknesses, I think. Yeah, and I have to actually roll. Yeah, because on a success, you recall an important fact about the creature, yeah, its highest weakness or one of the highest weaknesses, but not its weaknesses. You can exploit. Oh, oh, okay, okay, it's quite specific. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. Gotcha. So I'd like to just roll, um, a straight up recall knowledge. Go for it. Recall knowledge with esoteric mm-hmm. lore. Sure. Twenty-seven. Uh, that is a success. This is a Gon Hatin. Um, this is a flesh warped creature. This is an aberration. This is the reason why. It's not a naturally aquatic creature, despite its physiology. It has been warped into something strange. In fact, it has been transformed from what is called a Zolgath, uh, which is a tr- usually a traditional drow flesh warping process for a Zolgath to be turned into this. They basically become result. They result in hulking reptilian-like beasts. Um, but they prefer to crawl on all fours and tear at their foes with bestial fury. Um, yeah, that's it. They attack. They attack hard. They eat. They even eat even harder. Do I know anything about from that? Do I know anything about this aura? Um, sure, I'll give you that. It's uh, thirty foot. Is it thirty foot? Hold on. <laughs> no, yeah, thirty foot. Thirty foot aura. It's big. It's going to make you sickened. And if you critically fail, it's going to make you slowed. It's going to stop you in your tracks. Uh, I missed the weakest save. Uh, oh, weakest save is reflex. Yay. <laughs> I knew you'd like My that. My favorite. Okay, and then with his last action, Harold is just going to get out of the aura. Okay. Peace. Just- because right, if I can't attack, pick. if I can't attack around that corner, I ain't got shit to do up there. Oh yeah, it's a, it's real tight to be able to attack this thing. L- pretty much lump has it, or rage attacks through lump. You know, the, oh. it, with with uh, cover. So it's, and also it's tough. we beefed it because I was gonna ask about the oh no thing or no not oh no uh, that's not natural. But I didn't. Yeah, I didn't oh. think this was an aberration. Otherwise, me neither. Yeah. Happen, well, that's fine. It's okay. Next time. Okay. Uh, it doesn't really change much anyway. So it, it rolled a 37 over uh, Harold's 34. So, uh, Nick, what do you got? Delay. <laughs> Lump, what do you got? <laughs> I got a big old demoralize up in their face. First yeah. action. This thing's chomping uh, at you. 25. Velociraptor jaws. 25 oh against my will, DC. That's a fail. More of a Demetrodon. It ain't scared of you. You know, that's fair. Uh, you got more mouth than it, but it's got a bigger one. It got bigger mouth. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and trip the creature. Uh, that is a 26. That's a fail. You know what? I'm sitting on a ton of hero points. Let's go ahead and re-roll that one. How about a 37? <laughs> hey. That would be a critical success. Oh, uh, um. Describe how you knock this thing down and it damages itself via this very narrow doorway. A uh, lump with their one hand kind of faints towards its forehead and then just scoops their front paw at the wrist and just bashes their head into the side of the wall next to the door uh, for four points of damage. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait, I owed you a fortitude save. That's a 35. Uh, fortitude save... Oh yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, you're good. You're good. You're so good. Okay. Um, cool. And then uh, I'm gonna last action. You know what? Just gonna go ahead, swing and bang, raise shield, and that's my turn. Okay. Rough. Um, Nick will go in now. Oh, lump. Sorry, lump. You take twelve persistent damage. Oh wow. Roll me a recovery check. Uh, four. Uh, okay. No good. Nick, you're up. Okay. Uh, do you need a fortitude save from me? Sure do. Thank you. 35. I'm shockingly bad at auras. I just can't remember them. Uh, yes. 35 is fine. What do you got? Okay. So he's just going to start stabbing through lump. Uh, okay. Not like through lump as in 
you know, you know, what, you know, <laughs> you're, what not, you're not going to completely dis- disregard Lump's physique and yes. and biology for your stabs. Uh, you're I gonna, mean, you might uh, be safe around, with that. Around, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, so we'll be in we're it. looking at a it's a plus one to its AC, but it's now prone and flat footed, so it's effectively got a minus one to its AC. Okay, so we're going to start with an intimidating strike, a forty one. <laughs> Well, that's a crit. <laughs> Damn. Oh, what's that do? Wow. Holy shit. What's that do? <laughs> Why? Why? And how did you get a weapon potency one. plus two weapon? I don't understand. Uh, <laughs> not, a body? Not I don't that know. It matters. <laughs> not that it matters. So, okay, so 32 piercing plus the immobilized yep. plus the clumsy plus, the plus clumsy. you will be frightened too. Plus I'm rooted. T- yep. Plus fighting, oh, yeah, uh, plus fighting two. Yeah, yes. intimidating strike. Jesus, <laughs> from attacking from between Lump's legs. Yep. <laughs> just, just a little peek wow. out and a hey, how are you? <laughs> Everything's and, uh, gone wrong. Yeah, and then we'll do an advantageous assault with a map minus five for a twenty-nine to hit. Oh my god, yeah, that hits. Yeah, with all Ooh. these debuffs, and even we before the debuffs, uh, at, a, at a minus one, it would have hit. <laughs> god damn it. Uh, and that will be a further 11 piercing. Okay, 11 damage. Wait. Rough. Uh, no, that Wait. didn't put my... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that. no way. Oh, okay, so four. Yeah, 15 total. So extra four damage? Yes. No problem. Rough, what do you got? Wait, is that your turn? Is that your turn? Yeah, thank you. Okay, Ralph, what do you get? What kind of ore is this? Is it magical or scent or, or sorry? Oh, oh, it's scent. It's olfactory to be to be sure. Uh, okay, and it is, uh, it is an, it's an aura, it's olfactory, and I need a forest you take. Okay, that is a 32, and with my blunted snout, I get one degree of success higher. Okay, <laughs> you're good. You're good. Yeah, no one, no one's failing this one, apparently. We're all, you're all very fortitude-ness-ness-ness-ness-ness-ness. Yep. And that is a word. We came correct. In case you're wondering. Uh, Unlike that word, yeah. <laughs> How is this thing looking? Like, in the parlance of the game, would, would we consider Ugly. this bloodied? Or is, it, is uh, it still just fine? On the ground and very angry is what I'm going to give you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> How hard should I go with this thing, do you guys think? I mean, I wouldn't use a highest rank spell, but I would definitely just... Just, just blast it. I think we're okay. Yeah. I'm okay. Not I was thinking really about using it. blinding foam because um, it's acid, persistent damage, and blind oh, yeah. oh, until yeah, it uses three yet, interact yeah. actions. Um, yeah, I like that. But mm-hmm. that's a fifth level spell. Oh, never mind. That's too much. Yeah. Okay, Ruff will take a five foot step to the side and launch a phase bolt with his next two actions. Hell yeah. Uh, good call. Good call. It's a 24 to hit. You got a hero point you want to use on that? Or? <laughs> no, I don't. I'm not I'm not using a hero point on this menial yep. encounter. That's a step and a miss. Uh, that brings us to this dude. Uh, God damn it. Fuck you, Nick. <laughs> yep. God damn it. Ain't I a stinker? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so I can attempt to escape here. Fuck's sake. Um, at a tremendous disadvantage, even though I'm strong at it because I'm frightened too. Uh, I'm real scary. I'm going to roll the natural too, so I can't escape the immobilized, which wait, means I have get? to just try. I roll a 21. <laughs> like, oh, wait. Is that not enough? I'm I am I'm clumsy looking, to I'm frightened looking. too. No, I know. I'm just looking <laughs> at the DC. Oh, it's escape DC twenty three. Sorry. Yeah. No, I know. Oh, <laughs> God no. damn it. So I ha- I basically I've, as far as I know, I'm obligated to try that again at a mi- mat minus five. Uh, oh, but that's a thirty. So escaped, um, and then fucking stand up because that's what this fucking creature is gonna do. Uh, so no longer immobilized, no no longer. Uh, I'm now frightened one, and I am standing. But this is literally all my fucking actions. This is <laughs> bullshit, Harry, Harold. What he got? <laughs> does standing provoke? Yes, it does. That's yes, why I said bomb. It does. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. Thirty to hit. <laughs> God. Uh, yeah, that fucking. Uh, wait. 
Yeah, it is. Put all those status effects back. Or the fright that comes the audience. No, it's only, uh, it's only with a crit. Uh, this is 20 per- piercing, though. Uh, 20 piercing, okay. <laughs> Harold, what are you doing? <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay, Harold is going to use the swap action to pull out the hand crossbow. Okay, your new hand crossbow. Putting the cleaver into his pocket. Are you not five finger pocket. discounted. Yep. yep. And then second action will reload. And third action will fire. What's the da- okay. what's the distance on um hand crossbow? Does anyone know offhand? Uh, I think it's I think it should be right on the weapon. Should be right on the open. Yeah, it's uh, sixty feet. Range increment. Right, there we go. Okay. 24 to hit. Nah, with what? With soft cover, no no dice. That is Harold's turn. Well, only Lump and Nick matter here. Lump, what do you got? <laughs> <laughs> hey, so that's just going to try true. something new, okay? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fine, try it. You're a failure, though. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey. You never know until you try. Uh, do I need to keep making aura saves, or am I temporarily immune? Uh, oh yeah, uh, Harold, give me an aura save. Um, wait, are you in the aura? Are you in the aura? No, oh, you're not. Never mind. The aura. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a new aura. <laughs> uh, yeah, lump. Give me an aura save. Okay. It stinks. Thirty-four. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> yeah, that's your good. Uh, athletics. Uh, Thirty-seven again. Oh my god. <laughs> And uh, Lump just grins with both mouths and does the exact same thing to this fucking monster, just <laughs> punking him back into the wall. Is this like a shed of banana peels? Yeah, just- <laughs> <laughs> For two points the of damage. The most awkward suplex you've ever seen. Just grabbing it by the throat, just dropping it back down. And then uh, <laughs> raising oh shield. And you know what? Third action is actually going to go ahead. Because I've wounded this, I might as well. Uh, gonna go ahead and bonk it at the map minus five. Uh, 16 to hit for a critical miss. No, critical All miss, right. yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, you take 12 pure what person the fuck? damage again. <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ, that's yeah. double box cards. <laughs> that's, 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 that's crazy. That's, uh, yep. And mm. roll me a flat check. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, 15. Oh, it's gone. Okay. Nick, what do you got? Oh, hey, probably gonna do much no not the same because much not the same he's still fighting so yeah no please do episode title just gonna take a stab for a 33 uh 33 hits yep just a hit uh 17 to hit okay you mean damage uh one sec i'm just going to grab a feet real quick Okay, whatever. I'm just going to advantageous assault it. <laughs> uh, 29 to hit. Yep, that hits. For 17 damage. Uh, oh, 17, okay. Because you didn't have the... Okay. Uh, it's just, yeah, uh, yeah extra, plus 4. Uh, four. Okay. All right. Uh, and one last with do it with the mat minus 10, because why not? Ah, 21. No. It was it was worth it. Worth a yeah. try. Rough? Uh, first two actions will be phase bolts again. Mm-hmm. That's a 32 to hit. That hits. 20 points of piercing. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then he will swap action his uh, longsword for a striking crossbow. Okay. Top of round three. Did you see this going a little bit different, Freeman? <laughs> not really. Not not really. Because it's, it's a weird fight. The only way it goes differently is if you actually like step away from the door instead mm. of standing your ground, right? Like that's kind of it. And 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 you don't have a the person in front of the door who's an expert at tripping things. Yes. <laughs> mm. With with Well, technically a master. So, <laughs> just saying. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so this thing again tries to stand up. That provokes. Roll that at me. Oh, sorry. I was uh, I was looking at myself. <laughs> <laughs> this shirt is so good. I just can't stop looking at it. <laughs> it's 39. I was looking at 39. Myself. God, dude. <laughs> it's amazing. 
<laughs> That's one of the best excuses I've ever heard in my life. 39's a crit. <laughs> okay. Here's what we're going to do. <laughs> I need you... I need Duncan to describe right now how tr- repeatedly tripping this creature and repeatedly stabbing at it and phase bolts coming in and fucking hand cross bolts coming in how does this creature die? Because I'm there's no way I'm making you do the rest of this combat. <laughs> it's, okay. it's you, it, is, it makes no sense. It's not gonna be fucking immobilized. It's kill it. Just you kill heard it, it listeners. Put we it made Freeman give up on air. <laughs> yeah. Gotta, yeah. Just gotta finally warm Suck it, Barn. It's pulling it the mid combat. <laughs> it is impossible for this to be an interesting combat. <laughs> okay. So uh he after the first Sometimes couple stabs, he just catches the thing like in the throat, and fucking Dennis Quaid and Dragon hurts it just up into the soft palate, <laughs> into the fucking brain of the thing, and it just goes dead. I love the I love the image of you like your you and your spear all going underneath uh, Lump's feet and just getting up there. And oh yeah, like it catches it, yeah. it catches the soft palate, and then when the thing pulls back, he gets pulled under under Lump's yeah. legs with yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. And it just goes down in a heap of uh, whimpers and cries and weird sonic sounds. It's dead. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, what's next? GM. Uh, blasting off detect magic, rolling perception. Okay. Yeah, you, you detect that magic for sure. Ooh. You basically get a, a a bit of more of a view of this room, and it looks like a lot of meals were happily consumed here mm. by this creature. Um, and it is, I mean, most of it's just bone and old decay and sinew, but you do notice one... Uh, one set of armbands that seem to be unperturbed by all of the digestion and filth and everything. Uh, Lump will wipe off the feces and the urine and the bile. (laughs) The good stuff. These are are pretty nice. (laughs) Yeah. And roll me a check. Uh, Ruff, do you do you mind taking a peek at these? Don't you dare put oh, those in my mouth. I'm just no, saying. Uh, Duffy, I, it's I, not, I would never. Nope, it's not okay no, with du- me. This one's Duffy, not okay. Duffy, Duffy I'm now not that too Tulak is here, I'm not, too, I'm not, not too here, I don't get to be bullied anymore. I I never bullied you. Yeah, no, I'm saying Tulak did. He yeah. does seem to have seniority. Okay, now that Scott is back Duffy to is, his microphone, Duffy's, Duffy <laughs> <we> is can... <laughs> the oldest. One in the party now, I think. Yeah, Duffy, Duffy is the senior member of the party. <laughs> I was Duffy legitimately hoping Duffy was Scott's backup character. <laughs> a poppet. Just like, like, like a poppet a version poppet. of Two Lock. Yeah. Just, think, just, just, just a PC bag of We holding. call him Poppin' Lock. <laughs> oh, jeez. Raggedy oh, Two Lock. <laughs> the 36 on our camera. I don't know how to do Duffy's voice. Oh, it's quite simple. It's a bit like this. Oh, it's quite simple. You do it a bit like this. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Scott's got another That's character perfect. voice. <laughs> okay, so the both is now. <laughs> in the Discord today, we had the two guesses being a bad Southern accent and a British accent, and we just hit them both. Like, hey. <laughs> oh yeah! Shout out PJP for nailing the uh, Southern the accent. Southern accent, yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Okay. Who's roll me a check? Someone roll it? <laughs> 36 Arcana. 36 will do it. Uh, these are armbands of athleticism. They are armbands of athleticism. At- I give you a plus two item at- bonus to athletics checks. At- athleticism. At- athleticism. You got athleticism. <laughs> it's like two locks still here. Am I doing that one right? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Uh, lump is very just... difficult to pronounce in this voice. So are they just like weighted bracelets that get you jacked? They are skilled all work upon uh, uh, these armbands uh, that imp- uh, they have imprinted images of muscled weightlifters. Uh, 
<laughs> uh, on leather yeah. bands. <laughs> Literally, that's what it says. Uh, which grants you enhanced stamina and skill when performing athletic exercises. You get a plus two item bonus to athletics checks. And in addition, when you use an action to climb or swim and you succeed, you get uh, uh, an extra five foot bonus to the success of your of your movement. Yeah, man, these are my bracelets covered in pictures of Jack dudes. Yeah. They really keep me going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and that description, that description actually uh, exited my view when Lump very surreptitiously <laughs> just moved them into their inventory without asking. <laughs> I I was I, I said Lump was already going to just pull it yeah, off. <laughs> That's mine. Mine? No big deal. I'm here for a roll off. <laughs> All right, let's go. I was also in the in the in the market. Oh, okay, for those no, no, if you're in, no, you're in. Yeah, if you're in, you're in. Let's right, let's let's go. Do a roll. No, the urine got nice, got taken off it already. No. Harold, I rolled it public. Nineteen. Nice. Lump? Eight. Oh. Rough? Seventeen. Oh, goes to Harold. Hell yeah. New guy. The new guy. The new guy could use some, new, some gear. Let's, That's let's true. be honest. For the sure. new guy should do some work before he gets some gear. <laughs> oh. You were a I new guy once. The whole last... I didn't want to yeah, say Yeah, but my first combat, yeah. I bamfed through a wall and fucked a demon up. Your first combat, you got confused <laughs> by looking at yourself in a mirror. <laughs> Oh, You're Jesus not wrong. Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. No, no. no jokes aside, Touché. I, I the think shade. Her, yeah, her, her, her <laughs> the shade, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> that being said, if you want, if you want to, there is a there is probably an opportunity for role play when, when, where Lump uh, makes their case because uh, they be the tripper. Nah, that's the fine. Party. The plus two. It can't be shrugged at. It can. No, no, absolutely not. I mean, I didn't think about uh, that. <laughs> they, they could just do a swap, right? Like, Harold could get the lifting belts. That'll give him a plus one to athletics, and Lump could take the armbands. I, I like, they, he won the roll-off. Like, it's fine. Like, we should just abide by the roll-off. If you're okay with the roll-off and call it a day, we're hey, we can just, say, there's the cases for, can like, be made. Cases can be yeah. made. I didn't take any consideration. It doesn't actually work. Though. Because you would have to get rid of your retrieval belt. Because I think you can only have one item per slot. Uh, retrieval unless belt. that's that's a legacy rule. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I stick to it to a degree. Like you can't you can't have healers gloves and. I have seen real yeah. human beings Sh- wear two sure, belts. Yeah, but it's 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 the same it's the same argument of like uh, oh I get two sets of amazing boots can I just wear one of each? No. It's, I know it's a bit silly, but it's balanced, is, is the idea. What is he holding in the retrieval belt? Yeah, what are you Nothing. holding in the retrieval belt? <laughs> Nothing. You're not, e- not even your dignity? No, oh. because I had the retrieval... Okay, because I right? fucked up because I got the retrieval belt when I was doing an earlier build, and then I never came back to change it, and then so now I have it and don't need it. And uh, there definitely are other things that I would have taken instead of it, but I, f- but I've changed my build and I didn't. I forgot to change that, so I have it and I don't use it yet. I'm sure I'll find something. We could put the die in there. I don't want the responsibility of the die again. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> like we should figure out who has the die. Okay. I, how about I this? I'm down to use it. Like I will use it you hand it to me but i don't know for the listeners that's the that's the die the die die the one they haven't bothered to use in a long long time that's because scott had it the, the dimensional that's incarnate facts. enclosure <laughs> scott was bad at using it sorry tech <laughs> uh i mean if you give it to rough i'm going to use it and often like yep. i i am not about holding on to to gear or spells or anything like that me either I, I like you having it because you do have a free hand pretty much all the time. Yep. Whereas I, I have to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll take it. Yep. Harold where, where, turns where to Lump okay. with the belt <laughs> okay. and says, or the armbands, and says, you know what? 
watching you trip up there. I feel like this is going to be better in your wrist than mine. I, I, I didn't trip. I tripped then. And Lump just gives a little grin. And well, enjoy. Tripping <laughs> them. <laughs> Lump is confused at uh, the sudden generosity and... Um, well, if do you use that belt for anything, or we can, we can, I can swap you mine. It'll help you with climbing things and lifting things, and help give you back support. If you'll find some use with it, that sounds good to me. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll find use for it. <laughs> All right, uh, I'll go ahead and throw. Yeah, if you can take the lifting belt out of mine and put it in them. Mm-hmm. 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 Also, don't forget you have literally two bags of holding. Type two. <laughs> There's another one there. With that, this, sorry, spacious, spacious pouch. We didn't distribute any of two locks gear. We sold almost all of it. That's Very how y'all little. both most got plus sold. two. Yeah, you got plus oh, two. None of it was distributed, yeah. What about the Flask of Fellowship? The fire uh, not Not distributed. Okay. Not distributed, yeah. Yeah, I posted all of his loot. Y'all are supposed to do your Discord. homework, yeah? I, I did post it all. <laughs> I did my homework. But that's how we got the plus two uh, grader for you and Nick was selling right, right. a bunch of that shit. In any case, is there anything else to do in this room? And I put the retrieval belt in there. Yoink. Lump, roll me your perception check. Okie dokie. Eh. Eh. Uh, got a good old 31. Uh, you basically find these armed bands, start running over the room. Perhaps there's something else more valuable. You don't find much. Except for yet another secret door. Uh, Leads to the west. This pushes, Is that how it got in? I think that it might have been pushed into here. And then was, because this is a five foot hallway in here. So I think it was pushed into here to guard this way. Would be my guess. Uh, what a hard life this creature must have had. Uh, judging by the bones, it seems like it ate well, at least. But yes, being in confinement like this will definitely uh, cause mental trauma. It didn't help its mood any. Or its smell. <laughs> <laughs> the end of the five hallway is, of course, another door. I'm waiting for Harold to play that same song. Not betray the party. Sort his inventory out. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready. All right. Uh, Lump will raise their shield. Open the door if it's unlocked. I scout. You open the door and there is not an unemotional flash for Lump when they see a teleportation circle gilded with silver runes in the most pristine condition you've seen one so far. Stemming the Tide is an actual play podcast of the Adventure Path Abomination Vaults and is produced by the Uncharted North Network. Stemming the Tide uses trademarks and or copyrights owned by Paizo Inc. used under Paizo's community use policy. We are expressly prohibited from charging you to use or access this content. Stemming the Tide is not published, endorsed, or specifically approved by Paizo. For more information about Paizo Inc. and Paizo products, visit paizo.com. Music is composed by Will Savino and artwork by Greyhood. Stemming the Tide is recorded remotely using Foundry Virtual Tabletop. If you wish to connect with us or support this project and projects to come, we can be found at unchartednorth.ca, patreon.com slash unchartednorth, and on all major social media platforms. Links to all credits can be found in the episode description and our website. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>